What is happening, Mark? How you doing today, brother? Dave Cooper. Welcome to BS Friday Live, everyone. We are live, and we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. So Greg Ugaldi, I'm sure, is going to join us from Twitch. But if you're watching for Twitter, get your tweets on and make sure you tweet us. And if you're not following Mark Bare Naked Willie, you're wrong. Follow Mark Bare Naked Willie. And if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, which is getting 10,000 hours a month watched at the moment, that's a lot of hours. There's some bigger YouTube channels out there, but they're not getting the same hours. So we're super excited about that. Anywho, man, we got an exciting day for you today. And I, and I see some exciting stuff happening in the fish tank. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I love all the places where people could join. Last weekend was crazy. The amount of messages we got from uh, the folks that watch on Saturday. The Saturday crowd is nuts. Catching up on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday and coffee shows. Yeah. Uh, this is an action packed week. I was really tired last night, but I pushed through the night. You were cranking it out this morning. And I tell you, folks, the green room today, it hit the mark. We're going to have a good one. Man, we are going to have a good one. But first, man, I ha have you figured out how you're getting to Europe with me? Uh, Michael, row the boat ashore. Uh, uh, are you got an announcement? No, well, not, not. Well, yes. I mean, we're completely booked the full month of July and part of August. We'll be all, all through Europe, our entire family uh, doing our show, which is great. And uh, just got some more updates today. Looks like uh, first quarter of next year, we'll be in Vietnam and then New Zealand. And uh, we're having a great time with it, man. So nothing's ever 100 percent. But I will tell you what is 100 percent. This is trade show season, man. We've been busy traveling. You and I going to the trade shows. We got IBS coming up. We got IWBC coming up in San Francisco. And then I have another one in, in Denver I got to go to. So uh, it's getting to be super, super exciting. You know, a little foreshadowing here, folks. Maybe when Dave's running around with Ben and our friends in California, he that's might right. go visit a certain lumber yard if there's time. That's a Ooh, little foreshadowing. That's right. A lumber yard that likes to educate. Uh, <laughs> Lemon Pledge is the secret there. And Dave, this week I was invited also to March. Uh, we haven't talked yet. In March to go to Europe. And uh, I had to tell them my wah, wah, wah uh, story. Uh, so, uh, man. Hey, Sailboat. We need a sailboat, folks. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure uh, that would be perfect. Hey, listen, we've had several people on this show that have actually been knighted by the queen or I should say past queen. I'm sure one of them has somebody that has a big enough sailboat to fit that beard on. <laughs> so, uh, Dave, we got so much stuff coming up. I'm excited for BS Friday Live. Uh, I can't even tell you what number show this is, but. I think it's like 120 something. Um, we have a surprise today. Am I right? Well, I don't know if you consider this a surprise or not. He's a surprise for me always. I never know what he's going to say. <laughs> so um, if you're ready, let, let's bring in our guest surprise to introduce our presenter today. Good friend of the show. Yeah. What's up, Mr. Stephen Basic? What's up, gentlemen? How are you today, my friend? Well, it's Friday. I get to talk to the two of you. We're talking about building science. I get to introduce a gentleman that I met back in 96. It was the first time I met him. So we've been longtime colleagues. Um, and I find him an exceptional person all around. So that's always interesting. And it's... <laughs> Just, I get to design buildings every day. What, what the hell gets better than that? Yeah, that's right? a that's a blessing. Really this cool ninety six. If we can a take a store. moment of time before your introduction. Yeah. Can, can you tell us? Building? Can you tell us what shirt this guy was wearing and where your boots were in ninety six? So in ninety six, I had just come on board at Building Science Corporation, and I was introduced to him. Him and BSC were just establishing EBA, if you can believe it. I want to say he was the first president of EBA um, back in the day. He actually owned a company. So th this is the kind of stuff that really kills me, um, that given, given my age and experience in the residential building industry, I 
Ah, I think he froze. Oh, I, I think is, I think I think the great one has frozen. This is what we call a cliffhanger. So I'm not going to tell the story because I'm sure we'll get Stephen back. But yes, there there's a whole background story about our 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 presenter today. When Stephen comes back, we're gonna uh, uh, we're he's gonna back. Let him do I that think. intro. Yeah, I'm Here okay. He is. Yeah, my internet freaking out today, but That's yeah, okay. back in '96, he he owned a company called Shelter Supply. Yeah. And Shelter Supply was selling gaskets and dealing with air sealing, the Lesco boxes, if you remember those. Yeah. For outlets, um, all of that stuff, airtight uh, electrical outlets. And I actually, you know, throughout the years, I've learned a ton from him. Um, you know, if you're if you're talking about, say, the, the, the top people in the residential building science industry, that have had the most influence. This gentleman is right there at the top of the list with the best of them. Well, that, that means he's standing right next to you then. He's well, you know, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from him. He's a, he's a, he's a great speaker. Yeah. He's an entertaining speaker. And I don't mean that as an indictment. I mean, it as a compliment. When you go to one of his shows and, and lectures, you walk out of there with, an immense amount of building science knowledge, but you feel immense amount of building science knowledge. That's exactly it. Uh, so let's give him one more second to see if we can pop in and give the introduction. Um, 96, Dave, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Shelter supply was definitely ahead of its time. And um, it's kind of like a classic rock song. If you re-release it today, it'll still be uh, in the top 10, right? And probably the top five. Really instrumental in creating those stepping stones for other companies. Steven, how about an intro, brother? Uh, I'm Steve Basic. I'm from Steve Basic Architect. Is that good? Big Red. Forgot Big Red. Big Red is here. <laughs> I have a big red on hand at yeah. every moment. And yeah. who we bring? No, go ahead. Hey, let's 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 give it up for just a great all-around guy, building science educator, owner of construction instruction, Mark Overton. What is happening, Mark? Hey guys, how you doing, man? Man, doing doing great. I mean, how so, how much better does it get when you have when you have big red on? You got you got yourself on, and then of course you know it's never a dull moment with the bearded man. That's a fact. Welcome yeah, it's such, the show, such a mark. Uh, Thank you, buddy. So, Stephen, uh, the intro was great. Did we surprise you there, Mark? Uh, well, you did, because I, I I think Steve is one of my favorite people on the planet. I've enjoyed him since '96. Uh, we had started Shelter Supply in 1984. So uh, um, I had a chance to see Steve and, and what a what an influence he has been since the day he started. You know, he all the drawings he did for uh, magazine, what, everything he did for Building Science Corp. It was just such a, a remarkable uh, step where architecture then was playing the role it really needed to play. And that's to give us the, the sections and the details to actually execute on what we talk about. You know, we talk about it, but someone's got to that's actually right. in the field execute on it. And it comes down to somebody like Steve, who's done such a beautiful job now of sharing with Big Red and everybody else. These are the actual pieces, you know, builders don't build houses, trades do. And if we don't share that, we really tr struggle there, you know? I, I, I got lost at the beginning of what you said. Uh, shelter started in 84? 84, yeah. yeah. None, of you, none of you guys were even born yet. but um, uh, So that was kind of cool. I was uh, You had said something about EBA. Now, I was the board president in 1992, but I went to my first EBA conference in 1982. So they had the first conferences were basically mm -hmm. in, in Minnesota. And uh, so that uh, I had the pleasure of having Betsy Pettit, uh, Brad, Brad Oberg, people like that, that were working with um, Dennis Creech from South Face, uh, all those kind of folks that were at EBA at the time, kind of turning it into an organization to share this. So that's it's been a while. Um, and you guys have now taken it. Got, Steve, you guys have taken it to a, the level it has to get to to get everybody to hear what we're trying to do. This is yeah. remarkable insights. 1984. I'm, gonna, I'm writing this in my diary tonight. This is a great reflectionary moment. 
Yeah. Well, let's let's hop into this, Mark. We want to know everything about you, man. Everything from the moment you were born to this very moment in time. Do not leave out any of the good stuff from the hospital or Stephen Basic will call your mother or a family member or somebody that will come on here and embarrass the living daylights out of you. So you better be real. You better be true. But you only have two minutes to do it. So the floor is yours. Mr. Stephen Basic, you're more than welcome to stick around or you can get back to Drawing homes, up to you. But go ahead, I'll, Steve. I'll hang out for a little bit. It's always a pleasure to, to just hang out with Mark. Yep. Yeah, go you, for Steve. it. Thanks for everything you're doing, Stephen, too. Uh, so my name is Mark Liberté. I'm uh, both, both uh, president of Construction Instruction. My partner, Justin Wilson, and my other partner in the business is uh, Gord Cook. Um, I'm also um, business development officer for Hayward Lumber Company in, in uh, Monterey, California. And so I have a chance to work on uh, across all sectors of that. Starting out in uh, really 1984, uh, background is in, in um, uh, solar engineering, all the way up through uh, starting companies like Shelter Supply. We created sell products that uh, we consider ourselves experts at selling things nobody wanted. And that way you have to generate a knowledge increase to get somebody to accept why you need ventilation equipment, gaskets, things like that. Currently um, traveling all over the country as I've done uh, uh, probably three and a half million miles in, uh, in all those years, uh, just trying to get out and talk to builders face to face. Uh, with trades. And yesterday I was in uh, Montecito, California, walking through some uh, new construction and uh, some remodel projects. So every day I get to walk sites, work with contractors and uh, enjoy sharing the, the fundamentals of what it is we're all trying to accomplish. I, I love it. Steve, how many, how many, air, how many flights have you been on this year, Stephen? Uh, I've probably been about 30 or 40 here. So. Mark's been on 120 already this year. Yeah. It, it's not a contest. It's not a contest. And then he yeah. woke up, grabbed his pillow, and said, "Thank God I don't fly anymore." <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if we're judging flights like we judge golf, I win with the lowest number. Uh, you, you de- yes, you do. You definitely do. If, well, if the reason we're I judging flights like we're judging bowling, Mark wins. Well, here, here's here's why I bring it up, right? Because, you know, to really, we spread the word on social media. Mark, you're actually out there doing the real work on job sites, helping people be better. There's not enough education out there for what we do, for what all of you guys do, right? And here you are, have the opportunity to get around and help people build more sustainable, put better building practices in place. So that's that's commendable. And I, and I think, you know, obviously you can't drive all over the place to do that. You wouldn't be able to nearly have the impact you have that you have now. So I think it's important. Thank you. And I I think Steve's got a when we look at all of us, we all play an important role from social media. Steve does the same thing. He's on site walking through trades, introducing manufacturers to to technology changes. We all this is a this is all, you know, boats are risen by the fact that we're each finding a a segment. That's why I said earlier that builders don't build houses, our trades do. The people we've left a little bit are the trades who continually come in and go, yeah. I'm not, I can't do that. I'm not going to do it or the cost is going to be ridiculous. And as we all help them learn, bring in people into our industry to realize that it's not so difficult if you're willing to put down your guard and say, I'm going to learn how to do this better. And uh, all of you are doing a phenomenal job of that. Like I said, Steve, with the work he is doing is making a difference in that world in such a way. Plus he's, standing in front of audiences, doing lectures at conferences all over the country. That's how the game gets changed. And you guys in social, that, that's, that's it. You got you to gotta do this and make it happen. Yeah, for sure. I think his internet must have went out on him again or something there. Yeah, I I definitely agree. And it's growing. And the more people that are watching this, the more people that are out there that can take these same messages. You know, one thing about social media, it's free. You can put your you can put your voice out there. You can share the information. Uh, The more times that people share it, the more this uh, reaches out to. So, Mark. Tell us a little bit about your day to day. Like walk us through, like, why would Mark come to my job site? What are you helping me with? Like, what is your passion and, and what, what, what makes you the person you are to drive this forward? Well, that's a good question, David. You know, and I think I, I'll give you an example just in the last couple of days. So I get a chance to work with a couple of large builders in, in the Santa Barbara market. One of them is called uh, Allen Companies, and they're extraordinary at their sustainability uh, view and the quality of biz- business. They're at least in their second generation. Another builder there called D.D. Ford, which Doug Ford started the company, and the people who have now taken it over have also strong passion for doing a good job. They invite me to do a, to a job site, and what we do is have all of the PMs, project managers, and site managers from various locations 
will come in and we'll stand there and chat together. And we'll, I have to first build a level of credibility because they kind of come in like this going, I do this every day. What are you going to tell me that I don't already know? So there's this art of telling somebody that their baby's ugly without letting them feel that that's even the case. So we walk through the job sites. We go down and look at framing, thermal insulation, water management, uh, details in terms of how we're going to maybe isolate the uh, HVAC system. Does this project need a dehumidification? Where's the ventilation system going to deliver the air? So we get a chance to talk to all of those trades and help them help guide them through a process of understanding what they need to do. Then at the end, the wrap up really is each one of those people takes some of that information and then applies it to the rest of their team. So I usually do a check back a couple times a year, but uh, it's a it's a great experience. And that's through the Hayward Lumber that we're doing that kind of face-to-face -face, uh, effort. And then when we do CI Live, which is a training courses, education platforms in Denver, Colorado, builders come to CI Live have two days of classroom and laboratory experience going on all the time. And that is a classroom setting for that. So whether it's in the field one week or in the classroom another, the strategy is to do a great job of letting everybody know we can do this, um, but we got to do it as a, as a team and support each other. So uh, I think that's the great challenge. What you guys are doing just reinforces what everybody's saying. They're like, boy, what Mark Willie said, what David said, what Steve said, what Matt Reisinger says, what everybody is saying is all gelling. It's going yeah. like that. And you're like, so that means I better move my cheese uh, in that direction. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We got Steven back with us. And I mean, yeah, that's... I... go ahead. I'm sorry. I just popped in. I, I just want to say goodbye. My my internet's being wonky, but Mark. Love you, buddy. Dear, dear, thank you for all of us that walk behind you, buddy. Thank you for all you've done. You've Love you, Stevie, buddy. You take care, man. Made a, made a change in the industry. Thank you thank very you, much. Hey, I thanks, Steve. Hey, Paul. All you, Bye, guys. all you guys, keep marching, Mark, and I'll talk to you guys later. We'll see y'all. Bye now. Bye, Steve. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so here you are. How many days on a job site are you typically there? And I could see that, right? I could see you walking up with, you know, you, you know, here's this guy flies in on a plane and he's going to tell me how I'm doing something wrong that I've been doing for, you know, a couple of centuries now because my grandfather did it, then my dad did it, now I'm doing it. And those houses are still standing and that ductwork still blows hot air and cold air. And how do you change the mindset? That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's a great question. And I would say that that's what that's the preemptive. Uh, I've met with the team prior to going to this, to this big job site. It was a big job, yeah. site, very big builder. And she said, I just, uh, Mari's fantastic. And she said, I just want you to know these guys are a little apprehensive today. And I said, it's okay. I said, I've done this my whole life. And I said, so the art is coming in and making sure that we complement this industry for what is amazing. And I told them, I said, you guys take a two dimensional plan and you turn it into that. That's yeah. rock star stuff. How you take a look at that and say, who's on first? Which trade's going to have to go ahead of the other so we don't screw somebody up? That is a stunning level of coordination. And I can't expect you to always know all of the nuances of which product is going to be in what area. Where's capillary flow going to affect my building? Where do I have vapor diffusion issues? Where do I have thermal conduction issues? Where's the ductwork going to not work well with this particular room? I can't think about that. You're like, exactly. So my job is to help you have a general knowledge that when a trade comes in, you can say, you know, that compressed duct up there, we're going to need to change that. And I think that's what we're trying to do. So when I get done, when I get started, the guy was honestly, he was kind of like this. And when he got done within 10 minutes, him and I are walking down the hill, walking through the house. He's asking tons of questions. And she said, the lady, she said, I can't believe how quickly you were able to gain their confidence by just telling them that you were there to appreciate everything they've already done. And just if I can add any flavor to something that you might not think about, uh, that'd be great. Then suddenly they, you have to have some knowledge. You've got to share some things that sound logical and make sense, but mm -hmm. you have to do it very, very carefully. And after that, we become very good friends. I've never walked off a job site where people didn't go, you know, thanks for ch changing the way I saw the building today. When I got there this morning is different than the way I'm going to look at it from now on. And that's success. And so each time you build that, oh, so what he was saying yesterday, there it is. So then the next time you go out there, I already got that learning piece. Now, now, now what's next? And you go like this. So we all have to yeah. validate what we learn, right? I learn it, got to go out and see it because we're tactile, right? I want to see that. We take something and go, hmm. 
Okay, I got it. And, and we have to do both of those, not just learning and listening, but doing. And if yeah. you can get those together, the success layer, layer goes up. Your communication style, like when that lady forewarned you of uh, the apprehension, um, your communication style, starting by being complimentary and acknowledging, um, we can all we can all think about the first times we've been on job sites or worked on job sites. There's not a lot of that that happens. Mm -hmm. So when you start there, now, like you said, the shoulders roll back. People aren't jockeying for their for their real estate. Um, the other part that I like th is that road that you walk them down of giving them the peripheral view, right? Opening the eyes wide open and saying, hey, guys, you might not have heard of this word capillary. You might not have heard of clash detection. It's just words, but let's see what it looks like. Let's see how it will enhance your day to day. And uh, your communication style is actually probably more powerful. And I'm saying this carefully um, than the content you're delivering, because if all of your knowledge didn't land, it wouldn't right. matter. That's right. So the fact well, that well right they're, they're spoon feeding now everything that you got going, they're like, give me more, Mark, give me more. Right. Yeah, yeah, love it. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't treat them with enough uh, enough respect. Actually, I, um, there's quite a few people that, if you look at what our what the industry does, hot day, cold day, raining day, um, what we do as an industry and what executes in the field to me is stunning. I was just on my job site watching these stone guys, stone guys cutting stone and placing it there and mortaring the back and mixing it up with a hand mixer. Nobody really appreciates that. It's you can't just go in and go, hey, you suck at this. We've got to go in and say, hey, these are some changes that you might find will reduce the, the spalling of that masonry when you put that on. So how could we talk about that? Yeah, I just had a project where that happened. Let's talk about what happened there. He goes, yep, you're right. I could have done that. That capillary break would have really helped me. I didn't even think of that. Um, and so that's really that I use a term called guided discovery. So you have to guide someone down the path. But in the end, they have to go like, I, I'm going to internalize that, as you just said, Mark, and said, I'll internalize that, but I've got to turn around and either communicate it to the rest of my team. So I've got to well, know it well enough and accept it strongly enough that I can say it with passion. And so there's that art of guiding them through a process and say, so what do you think would be best? And they're like, I think we should do this. I'm like, that's a great strategy. You gave them the tools to accept your approach, but they have to absorb it. Yeah. You know, I think so here you are, you're on site. And you're you're speaking their language. You're you're getting their body language to get out of the defensive uh, position. And they realize, hey, you do know what you're talking about, but you also understand what their problems are and what their headaches are. Not only from what they're doing, but from a skilled labor position too. Like they're they're all struggling for that to get proper people in. All right, so you, you spend this time on site. You got them all eaten out of the uh, candy jar because they're all believers. You got them excited, right? This is the big thing. But then you take it one step forward further, right? Because one, you're working with Hayward Lumber and they've actually are working with you to bring education to all these trades because you said earlier, the trades are not the ones paying for you to come help them learn. Uh, but then you also have a whole website and a whole nother learning application to where they can continue this education. Yeah. And I think that's what's key here. You're not just a one trick pony that shows up and goes away. You show up and then you give them the tools to be better. Yes. Yeah. And I think here's, here's the problem that we all have. You guys went to the workshop over there in, in, uh, in St. Louis, you know, when you look at that three, two days, three days of this intense learning and you walk away and you're like staggering away going, what am I going to do tomorrow? And sometimes we, we overwhelm. I, I've done that where you go in and someone goes, yeah, listening to this was like drinking through a fire hose. And you're like, e exactly. But what am yeah. I going to do tomorrow? And so part of learning, like, you know, David, part of the learning is that I've got to give you three things I want you to, uh, to, to walk away with. But one thing that you're going to change tomorrow. So which one of the three? I'll tell you 10. I'm going to reinforce three and encourage you to do one tomorrow. And I think that that's how we have to expect people, because we can't take people down the path of building science, which is fairly complex, right? It's just physics. A lot of guys, I say, if you don't like building physics, what, I, what, you, what you're telling me is you don't like math and, and, and you're, you don't like gravity. So, so the, the, the challenge here is to help them say, I'm not going to tell you anything that isn't firmly rooted in math or science. And, and so that kind of lowers their level of saying, so 
this is validated math and science. That's why we call it building science. It's not yeah. just a guesswork. But I, I still think that when we walk away, we have to give them tools like the build show, uh, which you guys are up to. Construction Instruction's got an app. We've had an app for 16 years, 10,000 assets. Somebody can look something up. They can go to Building Science Fight Club and see Christine's work with uh, Ace Lab. So many places now that I, you can refer them. And they said, so Mark, where should we begin learning? And I gave them three or four locations and say, email things to your trades, uh, email things to your the people on your team. Go, hey, I read something last night. Maybe you'd like to read this. Like you said, Dave, earlier, it's got to be short and succinct. But yep. if it is, I can take it. It can't be two hours. That's That doesn't work. But if you give a few minutes of, of learning, they're going to go, you know what? I like that. I'm going to do it again. So we have to do that. It's almost like as kids, that's how we learn short cycles. And we're all ADD sufferers anyway. So uh, part of that is just giving me the little tidbits I can digest, you know. I think it's also amazing those those references that you cite for people because in those organizations, uh, just for a reference, like Mike Gurton, right? Yeah. If you awesome. message him, not only does he respond, but he, like you, he allows you to think and he listens to what you're experiencing. He probably knows that, yeah, all you need is that 12-hour kick out in the right place. <laughs> but if he tells you that, it's not going to get you there. So yeah. the fact that we have, you know, some people call them superheroes or, or whatnot of, of Instagram or builders of Instagram, whatever it is. All, all these folks are regular people that have dealt with mulchy sill plates that have dealt with. Yeah, that's right. A, 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 an immense amount of problems like the town spout that doesn't go anywhere. So when that, when, when you reach out to these people, know that the community supports the community. I haven't found this in any of my professional uh, world as strong as we find it in the supply, manufacture, installation, design, detailing, and engineering of marvelous construction. Yeah. Yeah. Great comment, Mark. Excellent. So why don't, why don't we take a moment and say hello to a few people, Mark? What do you think? I mean, you can see we got a bunch of people uh, commenting here on that side of the screen, and we're having a little bit of fun with it. So uh, Michael Bruce says, hello, Dave, watching from Orange Beach, Alabama today. I bet it's warm down there. I'm jealous. Good topic. <laughs> Mark's knowledge should not only be shared on site. And just to be clear, they're talking about the Mark above Mark uh, with all the CAD designers and have that never picked up a hammer, but are responsible for drawings and models that communicate to the shop the proper way of constructing their panels and volumetric modules. And Michael, I couldn't agree more. When Big Red Stephen Basic comes on this show and says exactly the same thing where the education and the learning and you know where the mentorship is in this industry i couldn't agree more perfect yeah beautiful thank you for that comment what a wonderful comment uh, you know we often find too that with the uh, the drawings that we're often following i always say that the cds are pretty horrible right construction drawings are really uh, not very well done <laughs> because the reason is if you looked at all of the places you would technically need to draw a detail um, there's so many that that doesn't happen. So what happens with architectural firms sometimes is they're cutting and pasting from a database That's where right. it might not be specific for that project. So we are always asking our trades to engineer a solution based on what they're looking at. And that's where that discovery process is that just telling them, like you said, so, so succinctly there about Mike Gurton, just telling them what to do at that location isn't as supporting as teaching them how to fish. So if you say, so when I run into a wall where the kick flashing doesn't exist, what am I trying to accomplish? You want to get right. the water this far past the other materials down below. And they're like, got it. They can replicate that. So here it's going to be an eight inch there. It's going to be a 12 inch, but now I see what you're trying to help me be successful at when you're gone. That's the, that's the hard part. I Absolutely. have an interesting story that I'd like to tell Mark. Um, when I was uh, first doing the framing, right? There were the two by four walls with the beautiful R11 bats, right? We had a pink Panther everywhere. Uh, this guy came onto the scene with a big roll of white paper and he said, put that on the outside and, and, and he left. And I remember all of us snickering and laughing about why sure. we're putting wallpaper on a building. Right. And, you know, we were all big and proud because we were making fun of this guy. Three weeks later, I saw the guy and he gave me a jacket made out of the same material, the Tyvek jacket. 
and I and I and I wore it after a race, and I was like, "Oh, that's what this does." <laughs> that's perfect. So when I experienced what it did later on, right through this mush mush of a brain, I got to understand why he wanted me to do it for the house. Now today, the programs that you do in Colorado. That is instructional, so it's the teaching of why we're doing it. And it's it's monumental because the amount of layers on buildings today is different than the amount of layers we didn't have. And so the why is just as important, and I love it. So remember that when you're teaching, but also remember that when you're listening. Don't just don't just take the tube of caulk and say, oh, yeah, caulk there. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you Wilson. know. Go ahead, Mark. Well, I was just going to say, one of the things that we do at CI Live is when we go back in the lab, we have everybody take sealants and tapes, and we say, there's a mock wall, as you've seen in many of the other events, put in the window. And then we'll build, we'll build a window, we put it in at the, at the evening event, we'll have, sit around and have a beer or two, and then um, the next morning when the sealants have set, we throw it in the morning, we throw it into a spray rack, and we introduce different colors of dyes, and then we start spraying the rack, and we put, of course, the rack, the, it's, under, it's under negative pressure, and we start spraying water on it, and we include a little couple of failures, and then everybody walks around and says, so go look for some water, and they're like, hey, it's leaking over here, and other guy goes, come here, you should see it over here, and another guy says, well, look how it's draining behind the cladding, that's beautiful, because the rain screen's working, so when you, when, as I said, we're tactile, when we go out there and say, oh, I saw it, I, I, I did the work, I put it in the spray rack, I saw it leak, now I get it. You will never do it the same next time. You will go back right. and go, yeah, well, you can't do it this way to his crew. This is why it matters, because I saw the wall leak. And you're like, perfect. I, I always feel that remodelers have so much knowledge because they see what wasn't done properly, right? When I ever talk to remodelers, I go, what happened when you pull that apart? Just what I expected. The rot was on the corners of the windows. The OSB was rotted. They put the siding right in the dirt. All of that failed. I'm like, so how do you do it next time? And the guy goes, not like that. So they're they're really underappreciated because they're tearing apart all the stuff that right, just didn't right. work, you know? Yeah, for sure. What's well, shout out? We got Peter Molinar in there. Big Red is in the house, he said, giving a shout out to Stephen Basic. So we got Al Tunisu in there. Hey, Al, never stop learning, gentlemen and women. I agree. And all the way from Washington, D.C., we got the great job, Jen, Dave, Mark, and uh, Steve, and Mark with his presentation. Uh, if you don't know Greg, uh, he is the past chair of the National Association of Home Builders, the top guy. Uh, he joins us regularly and a big supporter of us. So we love having them on because they're listening. And that's what we need to happen is we need the world to listen. So it's always a great thing. Good to see you, Greg. Good to see you. Greg will be on the show here in another couple of weeks as well. And I think we're going to have Michael Dietz on, who you see on NBC, Fox News, all those things. He is the head economist on housing in the United States. So that's going to be a great show as well. We look forward to having Dietz on the show as well. Andrew Seeley in the house. Happy BS Friday, folks. And no, he doesn't have a spelling problem. That stands for passive house. They love to switch out those Fs with Ps and H. For those of you that are new to our show, good to see you. Connor Dillon in the house. Art of telling people their baby is ugly. Ain't that the truth? Oh, that's funny. That's a good one. Here, Mark, here's a follow-up. Go ahead, read that one, Mark. So uh, that coordination is key to increase the efficiency of construction. I've seen drywall up before insulation was installed because someone screwed up the schedule. The masterful word in that is sequencing. If you don't understand it, ask more questions ask more questions because it's easier than doing it twice. And that's also why we like a digital twin, which in some cases can simply be a magical thing called a calendar. That's well said, Mark. That is funny. Yeah, I think it's hysterical, but I think, you know, when I look at scheduling, the art of scheduling in a marketplace where trades have a difficult time even making your window fit theirs. When, yeah. Imagine when a trade misses a day or two. If he goes, you know, I can't come on Tuesday. And you're like, wait a minute. Uh, Wednesday, the guy who's coming behind you is showing up and you can't come Tuesday. I'm in trouble. And, and when we look at the complexity of a schedule when 30 some trades 
descend on a building over a period of eight months to a year and a half in construction. If you imagine all the variabilities right now on my site, I, there's seven different trade contractors up there. Imagine the art of herding cats, right? I, I'm, I've got all kinds of people. I got stone guy over there, wood floor guy over there, the ceiling guy over there. I've got the electrician running wire. When you look at this uh, orchestra, uh, what Mark said is the difference between a, a, a silhouette, I mean, a, 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 a beautiful sound and, um, and a, a disaster um, is really watching the coordination of schedule. Tough to do. Tough yeah, to yeah. do. And it's, it's a joyous art because the folks that are used to the groups before them, the groups after them, and the right. groups in their way, when you get that gel, it is magical. Right. So the, the, well the, 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 the hi hat hits right at the right time and the crowd goes crazy. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah you know, so the, the, the funny thing, Mark, we used to talk about this a lot in the beginning of our, you know, in the beginning of our time doing this show. And I did a lot of it on, you know, building modular when Jen and I, we did our building modular show that's getting ready to relaunch as well. Um, and I think, you know, it's about having a team. And when you have a team, you're never going to have – it's kind of like building off-site for the first time, you know, using panels, module, whatever. You're never going to get your first job, right? Your second job might get a little bit better. Your third job get a little, little better. And your fourth job, you might actually feel like, well, hell, maybe I won't lose money on this one, and we're really going to start turning the curve and make some money and be more efficient. But it's the same thing with the trades, isn't it, Mark? I mean, it's you can't just bring in a new plumber and expect them to perform with the HVAC and the electrician contractor uh, and what each one of them expects. And you know, who's cleaning up the wires, who's cleaning up the plumbing cuts, all the fun stuff that comes with it. And I think that's kind of what we have to understand. You got to build the team for any one of us to be successful as a builder or what you do. You have to have a team of people. That's where your success comes from, not from the individual person, not on any job site. Yeah, that, that's a really well said that the builder I was with yesterday, she said, so who else should I include in training? And I said, well, you, you need to include everyone. And, and, and I said, if, you, right. if your heating contractor is, is obstinate, he's going to be sizing at 400 square feet per ton, regardless of the efficiency of your building. So he's got, you know, 10 tons of air conditioning in a building that needs five because he's not brought into the, to the mix. How did you do your load calculations when you have no idea what the wall assembly, the building enclosure, the window performance data is? How did you do that? Well, I, I, I guessed. So uh, the, the art in this, though, is I, she said, what else can I do? And I said, bring together your trades. If you like and want to build a trade base that stays with you, edu educate your trades. You know how many times I've been to job sites where the electrician has never met the plumber? And I'm like, you oh, guys yeah. are together. How many times does a, a trade tear out another trade's work? And you're like, often. That's a scheduling problem. If you can't figure out to go, who's on first? Who gets this cavity? Who gets this one? I think it's amazing. We design houses, have CDs, and we, it's a free-for-all of where the trades are going to go. And that's, that's crazy. Can you imagine saying, yeah. here's all the locations for the duct because we know the diameters. Here's where everybody's going to go. If you walked in, it would sound like a symphony because everybody would be walking around and doing their stuff. Now it's like, dude, I'm going to have to cut your drywall out because you you misplaced the wires. That's right. And, and I think that if we could do a better job of that, we'd shorten cycles and lower cost. Because as you said so eloquently a minute ago, uh, Mark, the idea of redoing it second time, third time, that's where the cost comes in. The guy goes, I can't make money doing this. I'm like, well, you're right. The way you're doing this, you can't make money, but you can be efficient and learning how to meet the trades, take them to coffee. Hey, you know what? I know you're doing the HVAC. I know I'm the framer, but do I ever do anything that really makes your life difficult? Yeah, you do. There's stuff that you never leave for me. I'm taking a sawzall and cutting your framing to get the ducks through. Could you create this drop? And the guy goes, yeah, I just didn't know you needed that. So there's the art of helping our trades be successful. Yeah. Mark, I have to ask you, like we've talked about this before, every every meeting that you have, because I know you do pre-construction meetings, Mark, it's in your blood. Out of those pre-construction meetings, after the thousands of projects you've done, have you ever had one where everybody just sat there and said, yeah, no issues, go, and they walk away? Or, or does the plumber always say, well, you can't do that. The code changed last week, and now I have to be this many inches away from the electrical panel. And, and right, that's what starts happening. Or somebody, the excavator goes, yeah, no, I did a job up the road, and there is a gas line that's not marked that runs right through this property. I know it. Right. This is these are the things you find out on these on these meetings that if you don't have them and you assume. Right. Tell me, Mark, tell me you got it. 
Yeah, it's it's beautifully said, David. Yeah, he just agrees. But I did, Mark is right. Mark is he's so experienced at this as well that, that this communication thing is the gap, and we got to do a better job. Yeah, it. I agree. We got a couple I, more. I was quiet because I was talking. I thought you were asking Mark, so I uh, <laughs> Mark. Yeah, yeah, Mark. I'm just gonna Dave, say, Dave, 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 Dave. Long hair, uh, long hair, long. I'm just yeah, so bare naked. We uh. We have uh, at the beginning of the show, Dave made it really clear with with mm -hmm. with how far your reach is and how how involved your travel is. Um, but the other point that we that, that I want to make sure we drive in is there's a destination where people could come to you and 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 to go visit Gord and to go visit Justin. And um, so right. so just a reminder, folks, besides going all over the place, head to Colorado. And you guys do do events in other locations as well. We but do, um, yep. make sure you take the time. This is why we're here today. It's really easy to use the Google machine. You type in construction instruction. This will be the top of the list. And and you can get involved with the, with the links that they send you. It is massive. You could spend the entire weekend eating popcorn, eggs, sandwiches and lasagna and not even put a dent in in what these gentlemen and the team have done you really you really have this yeah. at your fingertips it's it's a university at your fingertip i mean it's here look at all the classes you can sign up for and the animations on erv i mean this is just this is a, this is a true blessing for for the trades out there and for the builders to have a place where they can come and you know we talk about Matt Reisinger and the build show and and those things as well, um, and and he puts a lot of awareness on the applications and, and the value of it. But you know what's cool about this is you take it another step and actually teach how it how to you know one on one with people and I think that's super cool. I love it. I love what Thank Matt's you. doing. I love what you guys are doing as well. So, and you're also, and I know we were going to share um, the Hayward site as well. Let me, let me put this up here and then we're going to take a couple more questions and then that's going to, that's going to wrap it up for us here today. So let me pull it. Here it is. So the Hayward uh, lumber also is another site that people can go to to learn right they have continuing education as well i don't know why the head's cut off on on that individual there but let me see if i make it a little bigger yeah, there it it's is probably a, it's probably a, 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 a yeah there you go there's one yeah yeah, yeah so yeah it's, it's a unique it's a great thank you david i think the other thing about this is just that um, it's a unique lumber company of course they only have seven lumber yards on the west coast but it shows what our what our sponsors and trades and suppliers yeah. need to do for us, right? Uh, imagine a company that sells 200 products. The trades uh, can go to a meeting. We just did one recently at Hayward where we talked about wooey and the fire. We talked about exterior materials that burn. What does fire retardant plywood look like? How does fire retardant uh, one by six for soffits work? How does a Vulcan vent close off during a fire? You know, all these things that we're learning, we have these classes. We had fires that were burning and showing how each product behaved. We even took a piece of Rockwell and started on a burner and got the Rockwell rep who said, hey, you're pretty confident. Give us a $50 bill. He puts a $50 bill in a washer and sits it on that thing. We had a direct flame on the bottom, and he was a little nervous, of course. And uh, we, pulled the, we pulled the bill off and handed it back to him after an hour. And imagine if you're in the audience and you physically see that. You're like, you know what? Um, I'm going to put that on the outside of my building. And now I understand that fire matters. I'm going to do a better job of that. But not until we did this kind of fire workshop in all of those locations, the That's builders right. come back and say, where else am I going to go to learn? So for Hayward in that region, they've done a beautiful job of being more than just a lumber yard, but to being an information resource because we need all of the trades. You guys are doing such an extraordinary job. We need everybody to help us get this uh, learning curve because uh, it, it's so much to learn, but it isn't overly hard. We just have to agree that it matters. It matters to our customers. It matters to our country. And, and if we build these houses that are going to be resilient for the next 100 years, your children and my children, I want them living in a healthy, safe, durable, efficient house, affordable to operate, maintain, right. that is sustainable and is also resilient. And those are fair expectations. And I think we have to put those into the building consciously, uh, not by accident or thinking we're following code. We get all of that it is a lot more than that. Those words, resilient and health, are are really large billboards that you see reoccurring and reoccurring. 
but um, these these exercises of teaching uh, building science is and and as you mentioned for fire. So first we're scaring people, and it that's not to be an alarmist. That's to say this is a potential for happening. And then an, another word that we alleviate but we use health and resilient instead is sick or sickness. So again, this is not to become an alarmness, but it is to say the reason these programs are around is because people did get sick because the building had a silt plate that was growing mushrooms and people didn't know why they had headaches and slow cognitive skills, and breathing problems, a asthma up the gazoo, all these things are why the new materials and the new methods and the teachings happen. So think about that the next time you hear health or resilient, think of the opposite. Think of the sickness, and that's why this is here, and that's why the ability to learn to go to Colorado, to go to California. These dates are all out there. You guys do a wonderful job of projecting, hey, put this into your schedule, whether you're the client, the designer, the supplier, or one of the incredible tradespeople, put this in your schedule because you won't forget what you've learned. Yeah, love, it. love it. Go ahead, Mark. Did we leave anything out? Is there something you wanted to share before we uh, close out today's BS Friday? No, uh, other than the fact that uh, your audience uh, um, is just uh, doing a great job of researching it. The only people who are coming are the people that are ready to take it to the next place. Share that knowledge, share that information with other people to bring them into the full. If we all become really comfortable and knowledgeable about what our industry is trying to accomplish, yeah. we'll all build better buildings and they should all meet that criteria. But we can't do it one at a time, we have to do it as a community. So we all we all uh, learn from each other. So I've been standing on the shoulders of other giants, Gus Handegord, my friend, uh, Joe Stiebrick. Those are the people who've done their, their role. We are all rising those boats together. And um, so I, I just wanna thank you guys for the effort that you're making to make today and all the other events possible. So my hats off to you. Um, and and it means it means a lot to our country, to our housing, to our health. And, uh, and I really appreciate your effort. Are oh, there you. events? At, thank you, Mark. There, are there events that you know of that we should that we should uh, for the people tuning in today that we should we should have them put in their calendar? Can you think of something that you might be uh, either attending or or teaching on in the in the coming weeks months? Yeah, but I, I yeah I think that we you guys what you're doing with BS um, and beer when I look at uh, a fine home building you look at the events out east you look at IBS Dave you know the things that happen at IBS those uh, those uh, building zone that we're going to all be in those are the ways that uh, everybody gets to come and network with each other and watch and get up on stage and meet Travis and all the folks that are just up there sharing what they've got you know you look at Ben Bogey. That those are the class people that this industry continually is giving of their time and their effort and their energy to share, but to listen. So, so do your best to continually raise the bar, be a positive influence on uh, on what we're trying to accomplish. And people want to be around successful people doing really good right. work. Love it. So, what Mark just referenced, if if someone's in front of the Google machine, uh, BS and Beer KC. Uh, next week we'll be in Chattanooga, Tennessee with those two gentlemen you mentioned, Ben and Travis and, and a host of other folks. I'm not going to name them all. Uh, Dave was oh, come on. Switzerland with a few of them. So you could head to Tennessee or you could go see them in Texas uh, the, the first part of November. There you have it. Mark and Mark, Mark L and Bear Naked, thank you both for today. It was an awesome, awesome show. And listen, everybody, tomorrow morning is going to be an espresso with Dave. I have hockey again, 6 a.m., so you'll probably see me live around 5, 5.30 a.m. in the morning like you did last week. I guess we're just going to have to get used to these different hours, but Europe seems to love it, so it works for them by all stretches of the imagination. So with that said, also, you want to tune in Monday, this Monday, Centuries Old Timber Systems. That's right. We got David Rangley. Rangley is one of the largest panelizers in all of Europe, and we have David coming on this show this Monday to talk about what we saw while we were there. Heck, and you might get a little behind-the-scenes stuff thanks to Sega. 
because we went on this journey with Siga over uh, to Switzerland to meet all of these folks. So we're going to have him on Monday. And by the way, Mark, speaking of Siga, they have this and, and Siga is not a sponsor of this show, but they got a my vest product. Maybe we should build a my vest jacket versus a uh, Tyvek jacket. It makes a lot more sense to me. I, st- I got my Tyvek jacket in the 80s. I still have it. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it I, I had a white one. I have to admit that one got uh, worn and torn. But they had another thing where they made sports football teams. And I got that Chicago Bear one. Um, sorry, folks. It was the best team ever. So I got the Chicago <laughs> Bear one. And, uh, you know, I, I've never seen a, a, My- a Myrex uh, thing made. I have seen the Mento. And the Intello one, I have seen the Tyvek. It's an interesting challenge. So if you're out there and you're uh, good with the scissors and the staples and the tapes and the sewing. Make us a my best make, make one and send one to Dave and one to Mark. They'll do an unboxing. And then uh, there you go. Uh, Mark, you'll be at IBS? I will be at IBS. i got a few t- lectures there, and uh, I look forward to seeing you both of you, and thank you so much for the opportunity to meet you again today, and keep up the good work, everybody. Well done. Yeah, we appreciate well, you, too, well, and we'll see you at IBS for sure. We appreciate you. you. Thank you all. Bye Thanks, now. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, David. Bye-bye, guys.